Hello everyone, I'm Eric D'Souza and welcome to a special episode of Crime Writers of Canada's podcast. Uh, we are interviewing all the nominees for this year's awards and it's our pleasure today to be interviewing Gail Bowen. Hi Gail, how are you? I'm well, and you Eric? I'm very good too. Good. So, so Gail has been um, nominated for the Who Done It Award for Best Traditional Mystery sponsored by Jane Doe. This is by far not her first award. Um, and in the spirit of plagiarism, I'm going to borrow from Crime Writers of Canada's website because Gail was the 2018 Grandmaster. And I'm just going to read that bio from there. So Gail Bowen is being recognized by Crime Writers of Canada for a long and illustrious career as a crime fiction author. The Legacy is book 22 in her long running Joan Kilborn series, several of which were either nominated for or received awards, including the then named Author Ellis Award for Best Novel in 1994 for A Cooler Kind of Death. She has also written four Rapid Reads novellas, the Charlie D series, which I adore, and several plays. She is well established in Canada, highly respected in the writing community, and much sought after by readers. She frequently is a guest in literary events, and several of her Joan Kilbo Joanne Kilborn books were turned into TV series. Um, let's start with this book. Um, the title Legacy, uh, Joanne Kilborn Shreve, is pondering her legacy. There's hints, uh, like references to Eric Carle, the author of The Hungry Hungry Caterpillar, uh, and his ongoing legacy with young children. So I was wondering, are you pondering your own legacy at all? Well, I, I think about it, but when, I mean, obviously I'm 81 now, so you do think about legacy. But I when I think of it, I think, but honestly, in terms just of my family, that uh, Ted and I have been married 56 years and happily, and uh, obviously, we, I guess if it was unhappy, we probably would have cashed it in a while ago, but um, you know, and uh, and our, our we have three children, and they all turned out to be, I mean, really Nobel prizes, but no, no Nobel prizes, but they're they they all have good jobs. They're and they're good human beings. They um they're decent. They're activists. Their uh, their children and their children are are turning out to be delightful and and uh, and and smart and fun and and. Uh, and I think when I look at my family, everybody's coming for dinner on Sunday. And it's about with now with the girls and their boyfriends. And so that's about 21 of us. And uh, so we're doing that. We're doing a Texas brisket, which is everybody's uh, one of everybody's favorites. And But uh, but the girls have both both of our granddaughters, the, the older granddaughters, have boyfriends named Mason. So we call Mason squared. <laughs> so we're getting everybody into the, yeah. So it's a large family, but you know, I like them. So that's a good thing about the rest. I love teaching. Teaching was my, was my, uh, that was the one that I had a pension. I taught at the university uh, or, and I really, I, I love teaching. I mean, I never, I, I, and I think I was teaching at the right time. I think there are like I re I retired about I guess eight years ago or something like that, and I, and it was starting to get, it was starting it seemed that all of a sudden it was, uh, it, there was the love of learning was not as as great as it was I mean once upon a time, and I'm still like that I still want to learn stuff I mean I really there's not a day goes by when I don't get intrigued with something, and it was fun teaching. All in all those years when the students were like that, but now there seems to be this this sense of, you know that you know is it uh, not just is that going to be on the exam? I mean that's natural enough exam uh, question, but but almost like is this of, of any use? I mean and and uh, and I taught English and of course I mean I guess English is of no use to anyone except those of us who love books, you know and and. Uh, yeah, so I taught and I loved what I did and and of course and I do love writing. I I hit upon the the Joanne series just I had no idea it would be a series even and uh, I it was it was a very strange <laughs> way that I I came upon it. We uh, we Ted was teaching a class uh, we were out of town and I was at a we were staying in this spooky building um in in near Fort Capel that used to be the used to be the place for a TB 
like you right now who have TB as <laughs> you're coughing away there. Uh, but anyway, and and so and it was it was deserted. And I and so I mean, and Ted went off to teach his class, and I suddenly realized that the books that I'd brought were in the car with him. So I'm sitting in this great big spooky sanitar sanitarium. And and I thought, well, I and I just I had paper and pen and I started to write. And and uh which is <laughs> Kind of odd. That was not the Joanne book. That was something else. But it was a good. I kept. I mean, I did it. I stayed at it, and and I, and I think all of a sudden, then I realized what I want to do. I'm sorry. I just have a quick sidebar question. Are you cooking for 21 people? Uh, everybody brings something now. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I used to. I used to do it all. I'm cooking the brisket, and I'm doing Texas beans. And but then I've handed out the which I've handed out. I I choose. I say, all right, this is you bring the <laughs> you okay. Know? That so, sounds I, fair. <laughs> I think it does too. No, I'm but I do do the brisket, which is dead easy, and uh, uh and the beans, which are also dead easy. So I'm i and my and then my husband always for everybody's birthday, this is sort of for my granddaughter Madeline, who's 26. Um, for everybody's birthday, he makes the same, it's a Mexican chocolate cake. And it's so good. And I and I decorate with Smarties. Right, that's <laughs> my great that's my great talent. I am a, an artist with Smarties. I put for her for Madeline. I will put two six, and sometimes I put on a name. And my daughter in law, I misspelled her name in Smarties once. So that was a that was a sad moment for me. My humiliation. So anyway. Okay, now. <laughs> All right, back to the book. Okay. <laughs> um, I couldn't help but ask that question, sorry. Um, another theme that you visited in your book is regret. Uh, and sometimes we regret not the things we've done, but the things we didn't do. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the plot, but I'm going to quote from Joanne here. Uh, it's just a quick line from early on in the book. When good people fail to acknowledge the desperate needs of another human being, the other human being can be lost. Uh, Joanne has, well, she's been doing it for 22 books now, so 22 murders solved. But is she, at her age, she's 66 at this book, is regret a strong emotion that she has to deal with? I think uh, I, I, I think she comes to terms with most things. I mean, for one thing, Joanne is, and, and I try not to let people down. I mean, I really, as a teacher... Uh, I was I, I was always, you know, my kids went to the same university where I taught and and everybody would say she's strict, but she's fair. And and uh, of their mother, which was, they actually, you know, this is a sidebar, but it's fine. You know, my children and my grandchildren never they love me. and I'm their Mimi, but they, they they've never read the books and, and their friends have read the books and they're they're in their school libraries and uh, but i think i and one of my sons said i just couldn't stand the idea of having sex and i said well that's joanne <laughs> i mean and actually obviously i had sex or i thought i wouldn't have kids but um anyway but the, it and i get it it's it's one of those things where nobody wants to be somebody's you know you know Gail Bowen, oh, you're Gail Bowen's son. I mean, they want to be them, you know, and and uh, that makes sense to me. And uh, so, no, and I don't mind. I mean, it's uh, lots of, I mean, it, I get it. I do. I get it. And my and my daughter-in-law, my daughter, Hildy, and her husband, Brett, help me all the time with, uh, well, I am, you know, I am technologically challenged, I, like at anybody my age, I think, and and uh, and Hildy's always. I'm always doing something terrible. I've got a Mac, and you know, there. I mean, I love Mac, and but I'm I'm always managing to do something very strange. <laughs> How did you do that? And I, you know, and she can, and so I, I do the share thing with her so she can fix it. And um, but anyway, but that's it's interesting because uh, uh, and I mean, and the thing is, I've never been Gail Bowen except when I'm out doing something professional. I mean, I. You know, I teach Sunday school and do all the normal things that people do. I'm going to quote you again, but I didn't save the spot. But uh, you called sex the, the roller coaster of joy. <laughs> that one stuck with me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, that's true. <laughs> um, 
last sort of theme, and this is one that you've reoccurred many, many times, and I've heard you speak about it um, <clears throat> on a video uh, I attended uh, with Anthony Badolka about the underrepresented. So you've been talking about this for a long, long time. But why is it a reoccurring theme and something that you need to express in your books? And as you say it, not just token minorities, but actually representing the um, underrepresented. Well, I, I think I, I'm in that talk with Tony. When I was talking with Tony and, and uh, uh, Candace, uh, I, I mentioned uh, the fact that I had, uh, when I, I started, um, I, I, w I went way back to Margaret Atwood's book, uh, uh, book Sur Surviving, Survival. But where she said, it was, and this was written just really kind of after the Massey report and came out and with a need for Canadian, you know, pushing the need for Canadian culture. And, and she said, what would happen if every day you looked into a mirror and you saw a reflection that was not your own? And that's what we're doing without a Canadian culture. And I really believe that that is the case. That's the last of themes, but I'm going to say thank you very much because at the beginning of your book, uh, you have a guide to all your characters and uh, it's four pages long. And for um, these characters are integral to the story, but they've been going on like a lot of them have been in your stories for 22 books. Um, I find it tricky to sort of be like, who's that again? And I keep going back to the beginning of your books and like, oh, yes, I remember. Oh, and I appreciate that Charlie D is found a way into your novels. Um, but as a reader who constantly needs to remind myself how they are, and as a writer, I'm working on my third book and trying to think like, did Noah have a daughter or a son? I don't remember. How do you keep everything tight in your mind? Um, well, I, I, I will sometimes have to go back and into a book and uh, other books. I mean, like I know where other people, where people have come from. And, uh, but I will go back and read that to, so that I don't get the don't get the age wrong or you know and, and names sometimes if it's a minor character are are just kind of not there but um uh yeah I no I I, I think I I mean that that's a very real world for me I mean I'm not loony like Patricia Cornwell with wearing my character's wedding ring which is strange you know I, I this is not the one that uh Zach gave Joanne this is the one that Ted gave Gail, uh, but I don't. Do, I mean, I, I. But I do think about them all the time. I mean, I think about them all. You know, you have to think about something. So I'll, I'll think about a scene, and I'll think about something that works. I, I, I. Uh, if I come upon someone who really interests me, and 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 I did. This is a. There's a, uh, uh, an American psychiatrist named. Oh, I've got a block against his name. This is, uh, A. S. By. I went to see her reading and she said i suffer from nominal aphasia and <laughs> that's what i say now i suffer from nominal aphasia anyway it's richard richard something or other and you can look him up he's a psychiatrist and he's a concert pianist and he you really should try and i'll, I'll send you his name i've got it written down but he is so fascinating because he talks about the uh he he, he will and he's playing and then he'll talk but about musicians and the, the composers and, you know, Tchaikovsky, Chopin, Rachmaninoff. But he, and then he talks about the, psycho, the psychology of, of what was going on in their lives. And, and it, it is, it's, re, I mean, it really is intriguing. I'll send you, I will send you the, uh, the link. It's just on YouTube, but, um, but anyway, but I, so Joanne uh, Taylor is marrying in the, in the, at, at, at in, uh, in homecomings, she's marrying uh, a, psych a young guy who is a psychiatrist and a pianist. And I mean, I just, I, I was so struck with it, you know, just that, uh, and you know, she's, she was a prodigy and so was he. And, and, but they're, they have both turned out well and, you know, decent people. And, but I thought, I mean, I was so taken with this Richard, whatever his last name is, um, that I mean, he's he and just that kind of intellect. I mean, that kind, and he's so easy. He's got a very soft voice, and he's not. And but he'll just be talking, and then he'll go and just he just plays just and beautifully, not just you know chopsticks or anything. But 
Yeah. And so if I see somebody like that, then I want to, I want to put them in the book. And so, the, and so Emmanuel is the, the man that she's marrying and uh, the Taylor's marrying Emmanuel. And his last name was, I just changed it today. Adela. It's, it's something anyway, it's got a different name. Um, but anyway, he's a, he's a, he's a really interesting person. And uh yeah. So anyway, but I mean, I, I come upon that and then I start thinking, I wonder what it would, he would be like, that person, you know. That's an excellent deep dive into your creative process. And, <laughs> and, and we have, as human beings, as writers, we have to borrow from our experiences. So it makes complete sense. Um, another thing I want to thank you about is an older book. And I've thanked you before for it. And um, often when people ask me, like, I want to write a mystery or how would I start uh, what's a good how-to book? I often say your book Sleuth is an excellent starting point. Um, I'm going to borrow from your Amazon um, description. It says it's a smart, practical, and often funny guide to those who aspire to write mysteries. Sleuth reveals the secrets behind the curtain from best-selling and award-winning master of the genre. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that book and why you decided to take a break and do something different? Uh, well, I was I was asked to do it with the fellow who was hip, at that point the head of uh, 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 Regina, just the University of Regina Press, and and he it was his idea, and I thought I don't know, and then I thought yes I do because this is what I do. I mean I am I am a reader and I'm a writer and I teach I have to, I teach writing, and I thought yeah I can do it and I can do it in a way that will but make it accessible not make it seem uh, like, I mean, I was, I was, I think, I, I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I, in my mid forties when I started writing. So, and I always mention that because so many people think, oh gosh, if I haven't started by 20, you know, it's never going to happen. But, uh, but I mean, I, and I, and I want that. So I wanted a book where people could pick it up and think, this is something, there is a way to approach this. It's not going to be daunting, you know, and it's, you know, and, and you know, I mean, you've read the book, so, you know, it's, it's just, a lot of it's just common sense. Like, I mean, there are small things. Uh, like I, I write every day, every single day. And even when I was teaching and being head of our department, I still would write every day, even if it was for, you know, even if it was 15 minutes, that was okay. And I always go, and the other thing is never leave your writing in a bad place because you won't go back. You won't want to, you know, and so I have very rigid, uh, I have a very rigid schedule. And I always, I mean, I have my, uh, one of my granddaughters was, uh, we had our, our, uh, our house was on a, a tour, you know, like people could do it. And I think it was, I, I, anyway, I went, whether it was a charity thing. And we have a, it's a, we have an interesting house, I think, and, and we have some good art. And, uh, but anyway, uh, so my granddaughters who have spent a lot of time here and and one of them was upstairs and, and Ma Madeline, my uh, older grand, the older of the two girls, she's very serious. Or what she was, and she, she was going to talk and she knew the artists that she was maybe nine, knew the artists that, she, you know, we had and told about the paintings and, and uh, Lana who's kind of a flippity gibbet. Uh, she had, this is my office that I'm sitting in right now. And and I have a chair here and she, I could hear it. People, people were coming downstairs and laughing and saying, you know, and I, I thought I better check what Lena's act is because that's good. I mean, something that one was not bizarre. And I went up, so I stood back while Lena was going on. And she's very, she's very dramatic. She still is. And she said, this this is where it's done. I pointed to my desk. This is her chair. And you may ask, nobody asked anything. You may ask, how can she do it? Well, here's her day. She gets, here's her day. She gets up early, which I do, about six. She gets up early. She has half a grapefruit. <laughs> I actually have big breakfast, but anyway, she had half a great group. Then she goes up and she starts just to work. She works all morning. And then my grandfather makes her lunch. Then she has a nap, a very fast nap. And then she goes back to work. 
And then a school bus comes, that's where she and Madeline are, and her day begins. And I was, that was it. It's exactly right. Uh, you know, but I mean, because I never work with the kids around. I just always do whatever they're doing, you know, and and because I wanted to, I mean, I, I you know, I said about when you think about legacy, I, re, I mean, I have that. And that's a very comforting and lovely thing to have. But I'll uh, give you a tour sometime. If you want. <laughs> this is where it's done. <laughs> that's where it's done. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about it before we hit record. Um, I know that you've been, or you were in the past interview working on your 23rd book. So I wanted to ask how it's coming along. Um, well, the 23rd one is done and it's at the, it's at the publishers and um, I, it's at, at the, you know, substantive editors now. And so, um, it, but it's done. And then, uh, and it will be, and then the next book, which is the one I'm working on, is called um, is called Homecomings, and it will be the last book in the series. And the and it's uh, I, I've set it up so that uh, I I mean I I've thought I mean obviously, and I I'll, I'll get asked I mean a fair enough question too because it's a long series, you know. And, um, but I, I and I said to you I, I said to you before I didn't want to get one of those series where the I, I didn't want it. Uh, have ser you know, a book where the paragraphs were getting, you know, the 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 uh, you know, bigger and there were fewer words, or that it was just somebody's just phoning it in because you can tell, you know, that they lost interest. And so, I mean, and I'm still really interested in this book. I'm uh, with, with Homecomings. I'm ex excited about it as I was about any any of the books. But you know, and I think that I, I mean, I think that I, it will start. Um, uh, the the solitary the solitary friend um, ends and then the uh, homecoming starts like two weeks after solitary friend is, ends so it really the books can stand alone but they can also be read as one big you know one very big book that is that I and I want homecomings because there are characters that I would like to bring back and so because people want to know. Like what happened to them? You know, how was their life? And and uh, so uh, that's that. And then and then I I don't know. I mean, I will just sit in this chair and I'll have Lena tell me what to do. <laughs> um, well, that was the end of the questions I had for you. Uh, it was lovely chatting, and thank you for taking uh, time off to do it. You know, I think I could just babble on with you about this book. I didn't